Hello YouTube, it's time to continue with the 64 router and I will need to make something here so that I have a surface that is higher than this one which I can place the table up on so that this one can travel freely under it and at first I thought that I will machine something out of aluminum or aluminium take me a lot of time so instead since time is ticking and i want to get my machines running i thought that i will use these for these ones are pre-machined cast iron pieces with um, exactly the same height so this will save me a lot of time so the plan is simply to to mill like a groove here to make some clearance for the line and rail and get the router running as fast as possible. So now I'm on to the first piece in the vise and I'm thinking that I will start off with some drilling just to, to try to remove the material as fast as possible and then I will switch over to, to an end mill. So now I'll switch over to a roughing end mill haven't used this bomb before so this would be very interesting to to try this one is 12 millimeters almost half an inch So for the next piece I thought that I will try this little drill from China out.
right so I'm now done with the drilling and the milling and I'm very happy about this roughing and mill I never really milled something at a cast iron before I just made two short little little test cuts but this was the first time I actually removed a decent amount of material and this one still looks like like new so very nice I actually did a very stupid thing I tried to slot 10 millimeters depth with this one and that was not a good idea since the cutter pulled the Z axis down to 15 millimeters so in the end the slot was actually 15 millimeters deep so I'm, I'm very happy that the cutter is still still looking good and I will not try to push it that far really it's a mini mill and gotta be a bit careful this one is over 30 bucks so I'm happy with this one I changed it with using using this instead of the solid carbide sandwich and mill this one here is a bit shorter and it hardly produced any vibrations at all and cut very fast and made nice looking little chips so the next thing to do is to to drill through these ones and it's actually some distance to drill it's 74 millimeters so that's about three three inches and I got this drill here but I also bought second hand on eBay so I thought that I will, will test this one out so now I mounted a short little Sandvik 4mm drill and this one here that I plan to make the hole with is also 4mm so my theory is that if I drill just a little bit down this one will get some some help with the steering so that this one doesn't go like this So all the holes now drilled and I'm very happy that the drilling went so well and that I didn't break this one. This one looks like new I think. So I didn't really have any other long drill than this one to make a mark so I'll have to use this one and simply be very careful and just twist it around a couple of times I tried this one out already and I don't know if you can see the, the marks but it's one little spot down there and one down there so it seemed to work
right so now we got four holes here and i would like to mount the cast iron box with a screw from the underside so got a got two boxes of screws here m10 and m12 so now looking for some some screws some candidates for mounting the blocks and i think these ones here are my best option however i do not feel to to countersink for these ones down here would like to have as much as material as possible left so the screw heads will be sticking down so i'm thinking that i will add just a small piece of aluminium next to the screws that uh, the router will rest on so let's go for these ones so we'll need to drill a bit larger than 10 millimeters i believe that perhaps 10.2 would be good i don't know let's try 10.2 Right, so now we've got some holes here, so let's take and make the holes a bit larger in these two and do some tapping. So let's try some, some tapping out then. I was recommended by a viewer to use some some uh, lubricant when tapping cast iron. I heard that one shouldn't use lubricant when when milling or drilling cast iron. But so I never used it. But perhaps it helps with the tapping. This top here got a nice taper so that it self aligns down in the hole, but it doesn't tap for final dimension. This is only like a pre tap or what it's called. So now when I have done the pre-tapping or what it's called this one gets down nice and straight one just gotta be a little little careful in the beginning so this type tap here is for final dimension let's see if we can get it straight down there Now the four aluminium pieces are mounted with some uh, M10 bolts from down under and I'm thinking that I will add the solid table now just test it and run the dial indicator on top top of it so let's give that a try So what needs to be done next is to make a small little distance piece here and it's kind of tricky to measure the height so I'm using my, my gauge blocks and I just found a combination that seemed to work or seemed to have a very nice fit and if you haven't seen gauge blocks they are pretty cool they are basically ground and perhaps polished also so that they are very flat and got a specific measurement and then you can 
combine them together and since they are so flat you can get them to to stick so that is pretty cool So I decided to to mount this face mill for 390 inserts. Haven't tested this one yet, so this will be interesting. I will try and take off 0 0.1 millimeters. So let's see how that goes. This was not a very good finish. And that looks a bit better. Let's see how, how we finish. So I now flip the piece around. I need this one to be 6.85 but I did not dare to mill the exact thickness or dimension. I was aiming for 6.9 something like that. I need the thickness to be 6.85 but I thought that I will remove the final material with some sandpaper. So here we got uh, 6. Uh, 93 and on the other side we got 6.93 so I will have to remove 0 0.08 millimeters with the sandpaper Perhaps I could have milled some more. There we go. Probably could have taken off half a millimeter more, but safety first.
understand it some more and it's starting to engage now in the middle here so let's take a look at it we are at 21 and then the screw is pulling up a little bit we're at 18 so it's 300 of the millimeter left to to remove and i'll sand a bit more on this one and this one is approximately six point So let's say 6.84 and the gauge blocks that I initially measured with are they're supposed to be 6.85 shows 6.86 on the caliper so I believe that uh, this one here will fit just fine now without engaging with the dial indicator so we are at 77 I believe yep it's still got a nice kind of like a squeeze fit without moving the dial indicator so that was just what i was aiming for very interesting that the high spots were out here in the corners i guess it will have to do with either cut cutting deflection cutter deflection or how i uh, tension it between the jaws and the Ys. Or perhaps both but I guess that the more material the cutter engages to the deeper it will pull down so that's why it's lowest here in the middle but I'm not sure about that All right so what needs to be done now is to drill four holes into this one So what's next I think is to mark out for where the hole needs to be an aluminium plate. So now done some measuring and center punishing where to drill then. So let's try and get this one up on the mini mill. I think I need a larger mill. These ones here didn't feel very safe so now I'm onto this one here and hoping to being able to rest the piece onto here and then clamp it down like this. Nope, this one ain't going anywhere.
So let's try and get the gantry up on, on the base plate. It's only a 36 kilos, but it's not a very good lifting position where it's, where it's at. And I, I haven't been hitting the gym since I started off with this hobby, so that's kind of the downside of this hobby. Yes, there we go. I haven't been deadlifting for I think two or three years. 